namaskar and welcome back to the series of lectures on concrete engineering and technology where we are talking of the subject in the context of the importance that it is acquired in the recent past arising out of increased concern for quality and durability in concrete construction realization that concrete is not a maintenance free material and a lot of experience that we have gathered from the performance of existing concrete structures built maybe 10 20 30 50 years ago and we are talking of these different things fundamentals of concrete proportioning of concrete mixes stages in concrete construction and so on now in this we had talked of mechanisms of uh, deterioration in concrete structures and among in that we had discussed a little bit about reinforcement corrosion in concrete. Now, as far as this subject is concerned, we say that corrosion is basically a process where iron gets converted to iron oxide and iron, and iron hydroxide. I mean there can be several oxides, there can be several hydroxides, but basically it is a process where iron is converted to oxides and hydroxides of iron in the presence of water and oxygen. We must remember that iron if it is left in the atmosphere, it corrodes pretty easily and as far as corrosion of reinforcement in concrete is concerned, it is not so common even though we have an ample supply of oxygen and water and we talked about the reasons why that does not happen. The reason is the formation of this passivating film in the neighborhood of the reinforcing bars because of the high pH of the pore solution in concrete, which is a product of the formation of large amounts of calcium hydroxide on account of large amounts of calcium hydroxide, which is formed when cement hydrates. Now, we have also seen that this passivating film can be damaged as shown here which typically happens for example, in the case of chloride rich environment and where we have chloride induced reinforcement corrosion. The basic principle there is that in the neighborhood of the reinforcing bar, if the chloride concentration exceeds a certain threshold level, this film is damaged as shown here and therefore, the surface of the bar is exposed to the action of oxygen and water which is in abundant supply in the cover concrete or the main body concrete and that is how corrosion proceeds. It can also happen in the case of carbonation which is the process where carbon dioxide from the atmosphere goes into concrete lowering the pH there because of the action or the reaction of calcium hydroxide in the pore solution with the penetrating carbon dioxide as a result of which the pH is reduced and the this passivating film which was here is destabilized because of thermodynamic considerations. The pH goes down and the thermodynamically the stabilizing film or the passivating film is no longer stable. So, in both these conditions we have conditions which are ripe for corrosion of the reinforcement. Now, in order to address this problem of reinforcement corrosion, we can follow these three fundamental steps. We can either coat the bar, that is we provide a physical barrier between the oxygen and water in the concrete and the steel surface or the surface of the iron on the reinforcement surface. Or we could simply use non corrosive reinforcement, we could use a material that does not corrode or we can do something electrochemically, because we know that corrosion is an electrochemical reaction which involves the conversion of iron to iron ions and release of electrons at the anode and the consumption of these anodes with oxygen and water, which gives you hydroxyl ions and this reaction taking place at the cathode. So, if for by some mechanism 
we are able to control the reaction at the anode or the cathode by some electrochemical means, then we can prevent corrosion. So, these are the basically the three fundamental steps. Now, as far as coating the reinforcing bar is concerned, we could use something like epoxy coated bars or galvanized steel bars and so on, which are in this category, where we are talking of coating the reinforcement with a barrier. Non corrosive reinforcement is something like fiber reinforced materials, we will probably talk about this later on. As far as electrochemical methods for preventing corrosion is concerned, we could consider something like cathodic protection. Now, cathodic protection is a standard tool as far as steel structures or pipelines are concerned. Its application in the case of concrete structures is rather small. There may be some applications, but by and large we have not too many applications of cathodic protection as a means to prevent or protect the reinforcement in a concrete structure. So, our discussion today would be focused on the use of epoxy coated bars as far as one of the methods is concerned for prevention of corrosion in the reinforcing steel. Now, what is an epoxy coated bar? It is basically a steel bar, a normal steel bar which has a very fine coating of epoxy material on it. Please remember that this figure is not to scale, so that the thickness is very small. Now, since it is basically a normal steel bar, most of the considerations that apply for the choice of a reinforcing steel would still apply as far as the use of epoxy coated bars in concrete construction is concerned. And therefore, normal tests such as the tensile strength, elongation etcetera, which are usually carried out for normal steel reinforcement are not going to be talked about here and we would assume that you already know about them. And the, as far as the coating is concerned, I already mentioned that it is only a few microns. The approach adopted here would be similar in case of other bars, for example, galvanized bars or any other coating that we use, because it, the principle is the same. In new construction, the basic philosophy design is similar to that of using normal reinforced uh, or normal reinforcing bars. If we are using epoxy coated bars in a repair or a rehabilitation job, then we have to talk in terms of compatibility, we have to talk a little bit about the issues related to corrosion, the electrochemistry and so on. But for the discussion today, we would confine ourselves to using normal epoxy coated bars in concrete construction and the special tests that need to be carried out when we are using such bars in the concrete construction. The discussion today would largely be based on the provisions of the Japan Society of Civil Engineers publications relating to use of epoxy coated reinforcing steel bars. And we have the issues related to the coating itself. Then we have some issues related to patch painting that is the material that is used in case certain repairs need to be carried out. Then of course, there are steel bars which are to be used for the manufacture of epoxy coated bars and the blasting of steel bars for epoxy coated bars. This blasting refers to sand blasting which basically means or is a process by which the normal steel bars are cleaned before they are epoxy coated. Though we will not cover it in detail, the manufacture of epoxy coated bars essentially involves normal reinforcing bars heated to a certain temperature, exposed to a powder of epoxy, which condenses on the hot surface of the reinforcing bar, forming a very tight thin film on the surface of the bar. Let me show you some of these epoxy coated bars. This is an epoxy coated bar. As you can see that it is really a normal steel bar with ribs on the surface 
except that it has a green coating. The color can be any color that the manufacturer decides or it is pleasing to you. So, there is a color coated. So, it is basically a normal steel bar with a coating of epoxy. These bars come in different diameters. You can have a bar which is about say 16 or 18 mm in diameter, there could be a bar which is about 12 mm in diameter and so on. If you can closely look at the surface here, you can see that the surface is the same as of a normal steel bar and the coating can hardly be measured in terms of millimeters and so on, because it is really a very thin film. So, we must remember that this is the kind of material that we are talking of when we are using epoxy coated bars in normal reinforced concrete construction or pre stress concrete construction. These are the bars which are embedded in concrete. As far as the recommendations for design and construction of concrete structures using epoxy coated reinforcing steel bars is concerned, which is a JSC publication, Japan Society of Civil Engineers, it, it has 9 chapters, general provisions, coated bars, concrete materials, mixed proportion of concrete, reinforcement work, placing of concrete, repair of coated bars, allowable stresses and structural detailing. Now, if you look at this closely, Except for the chapter on coated bars, repair of coated bars and perhaps some considerations that will apply in terms of placing of concrete, some special considerations that will apply as far as reinforcement work is concerned, which means tying of reinforcement, bending of reinforcement and so on. The other things are just the same as far as are just the same as in the case of normal concrete construction. The general provisions, the concrete materials, the proportioning of concrete, the allowable stresses in the reinforcement and structural detailing, these are really independent of the fact that whether the reinforcing material being used is a normal reinforcement or an epoxy coated reinforcement. In other words, we have to ensure that the coated bar in addition to meeting the requirements of a normal steel bar, also satisfies the requirements from the point of view of durability, in terms of the fact that it should not be a damaged coating and so on. And that is what we will try to study in our discussion today. Then as far as standard specifications and test methods for epoxy coated bars is concerned, there are test methods for holidays, which is essentially a pinhole or a small discontinuity in the coating. So, you can imagine that these coatings need not be absolutely continuous. So, there can be a manufacturing defect, wherein there could be pinholes, which are called holidays, there could be small discontinuities and so on. And that is what we need to test and find out. There are tests for impact strength, there is a test for bendability. There is a test for bond strength, there is alkali resistance, corrosion resistance and so on. As far as the specifications and test methods for coatings is concerned, there are standard specifications for this, then there are test methods for visual inspection of coatings, adhesiveness of coatings, impact strength of the coating, flexibility of the coating, abrasion resistance of coatings, hardness of coatings, corrosion resistance and chemical resistance of coatings. So, there is a small difference which is being made between the characterization of the coatings themselves and the characterization and quality control of the epoxy coated bar. There are standard specifications for steel bars which can be used and that is more or less the same as the normal standard norm and that is more or less the same as that for normal reinforcing bars. There is a standard specification and test methods for patch painting for repair of epoxy coated bars, which could be specifications for the patch paint and there is a test method for the patch paint. There are specifications for blasting, which is basically a process by which is, which is basically a process for cleaning the surface of the bar to make sure that the coating 
properly adheres to the surface of the reinforcement. Now, coming to the main discussion that we have for today, which is testing of epoxy coated bars in the laboratory. The principle of testing for holidays and pinholes in epoxy coated bars is basically to use a high voltage device and check whether contact electrical contact is made through the non conducting coating. Second the bars or more specifically the coatings used should have adequate impact resistance to withstand accidental and at times unavoidable impact during placing and compacting of concrete. What this really refers to is the handling of the reinforcing bars. Sometimes the reinforcing bars can hit each other by design or sometimes accidentally. So, when a bar falls on another bar, the coating on the bars should not get damaged beyond an acceptable limit. And that is what we try to test when we try to determine the impact resistance of a coating in an epoxy coated bar. A same thing happens when we are dealing with compaction using internal vibrators. So, the needle of the internal vibrator unavoidably hits the reinforcement. What we try to do is to make sure that the needle that is used for the vibration is also epoxy coated and therefore, the kind of impact that it has is not as severe as a normal steel uh, needle would have. The details of these tests in terms of the actual voltages used and so on are not covered in the discussion today and I would encourage you to look up appropriate references and test methods from the ASTM or any other source. Coming to the first order of business, which is in terms of the thickness of the coating of the epoxy coated bars. So, if you look at this bar again, what we need to ensure is that the coating thickness of this entire bar should be the same. In principle, yes, it should be the same, but as far as engineering is concerned, it will have a certain amount of tolerance and that should be minimal. It should be as small as possible. It should be within acceptable limits and the coating should be uniform in size and conform to the requirements, which is given in terms of the variations and so on. And the coat, this thickness of the coating needs to be measured appropriately using a thickness device and is a part of the normal quality control exercise by the manufacturer. Of course, handheld and portable thickness measurement devices can be used to check the thickness of coatings at site in a spot check. We should remember that unless the coating is simply too thick, the effect of the presence of the coating on the bond with the surrounding concrete is rather nominal, especially in the case of deformed bars, where the bond is predominantly provided by the mechanical action of the ribs. In case of non deformed bars or MS rounds, there I can imagine yes, if we coat a deformed, if we coat a MS round, then the implication in terms of the bond strength would be much larger, because basically there the friction between the MS round and the surrounding concrete is the predominant force providing the bond strength. In this case where deformed bars are used and that is typically the case in most of the reinforced concrete construction now, the predominant force as far as bond is concerned is provided by the mechanical action of the ribs and the friction per se is a very small component and therefore, the presence of epoxy coatings on the bars does not really affect the bond strength. Of course, as a matter of completeness, we need to do appropriate bond tests to ensure that any reduction that uh, any reduction that happens in the bond strength is within 
acceptable limits. Coming to the bend test of the epoxy coated bar, in concrete construction the reinforcement very often needs to be bent and when we bend the reinforcement we need to get a shape which is something like this. So, a straight bar is bent around the fulcrum in order to give a certain shape. This can happen at the corners, this can happen when we bend the bars from the considerations of shear and so on and so forth. Now, once we do that, what really happens is that the outer surface of the bar is subjected to tensile forces. And if the coating is not ductile enough, it will be damaged and that is what we need to ensure that does not happen. And this is why we have to carry out a bend test. Obviously, there should be appropriate rollers should be used, so that the contact itself does not damage the bar. We use coated rollers themselves and so on. The details of tests such as the actual diameter of the roller which should be used, the angle through which the bar should be bent and so on is being left out from our discussion today. Now, this picture here shows what happens to a bar which is not good enough. This picture here shows that the cracking, this picture here shows that the coating has cracked, it has simply failed. It did not have the right amount of flexibility and when the bar was bent, there was a failure at this point compared to the bar shown below. So, this is the bent test for the epoxy coated bars. This device here is used to detect the presence of holidays or pinholes in epoxy coated bars. And as was mentioned earlier, basically the idea is that there is a high voltage applied between some place here where the coating has been removed and the naked surface of the reinforcement exposed and the power supply here and this power supply and the contact that we have at the reinforcement. The continuity is checked using this kind of an electrode or a brush which is used along the reinforcement. So, if we have a bar like this, what we do is use that brush at different points to check whether the coating is integral. The non-conducting nature of the coating makes sure that only at locations where there are pinholes on the epoxy coated bar, where there will be a contact and that can be seen using the multimeter kind of device that we use in the system. As far as the specifications are concerned, we can talk in terms of what is the maximum number of pinholes that can be tolerated. Please understand that it is virtually impossible to get 0 pinholes. A manufacturer can target 0 pinholes, but there will be some pinholes sometimes and it is up to the client or the user to decide what is an acceptable level of defects. It is much like the characteristic strength of concrete, where we say yes, we accept 5 percent failure of cubes that is 5 percent failure below the characteristic strength. Of course, from an engineering point of view, we also impose a limit on what is the minimum acceptable strength regardless of the 5 percent criteria. That is part of quality control of concrete. Similarly here, we have to have a specification which says that well, in the manufacturing process, we will test the bars with a certain frequency. We will test certain lengths per total length of the bars manufactured and we will accept the bars 
provided the number of defects is lower than an except than a predetermined number. So, that is how we basically go about doing a quality control as far as presence of holidays in epoxy coated bars is concerned. Now, this picture here shows how the impact resistance of epoxy coated bars is carried out. So, we can see that there is a graduated scale that runs along the pipe which is here and this here is a tub which is something like this in shape and this tub is taken up and the how high it has gone is measured by this graduate this scale and allowed to fall onto this reinforcing bar here. Once it falls on the reinforcing bar what we need to see is whether the coating has been damaged or not and that is something which is shown here that once the tub falls on the reinforcing bar here what happens is shown here that is the a kind of pit is formed and that pit if now depending on the properties of the coating this pit may have an unacceptable or a very thin thickness or a very small thickness here or it may even simply break and that again can be seen in terms of a device. Now, whether or not this pit that has formed has actually resulted in the formation of a unacceptably thin film or has resulted in an unacceptable level of damage to the film can again be checked using a device something like this. And we use the same device to check whether the coating that has the pit that has formed or that this deformation that has occurred in the coating is acceptable or not. Needless to say the specifications that we use in terms of the voltage used for impact test and so on need not really be the same as that for used in the case of determination of pinholes in the epoxy coated bars. Now, coming to the thickness of course, we have seen that there are devices which will tell us how the thickness is or what is the variation of the thickness along the length and there again we need to have specifications which will tell us what is the amount of variation that we will accept as far as the mean value is concerned, what is the minimum thickness that we will accept and so on. Now, as far as the impact resistance of the epoxy coated bar is concerned, the weight of the tub is standardized and therefore, the impact resistance has to be measured in terms of the height through which it can fall and still not damage the coating. Now, how do we go about determining this height? So, let us go through a small example and see how this can actually be determined. If we have the height of fall to be 15 centimeters, 16 centimeters, 17 and 18 and so on we keep increasing it. What we are really doing is we are increasing the height through which the tub is allowed to fall by 1 centimeter and as far as the performance of the coating is concerned which is measured in terms of whether the coating is damaged or not when the tub is allowed to fall from that height. Let us say that at 15 centimeters the performance is acceptable that is the coating does not get damaged at 16 centimeters again it is acceptable. So, so long as it is acceptable we increase the height to determine what happens at that next stage. So, for example, at 17 is also is acceptable, but at 18 the performance is not acceptable. What is done actually is that we need to keep changing the location as well. What we need to do is to keep changing the location at which the strike occurs. So, this bar here is shifted by a unit every time 
we do the test. So, if we look at the bar, the first impact is let us say carried out here and the bar is moved, the next impact is carried out here and the bar is moved and so on and so forth. So, it is important to ensure that at no place the bar is actually struck twice. So, having said that, now if the coating fails, if it is dropped from 18 centimeters, the procedure would say that you go back to 17 and find out if the coating is still intact. And if it is intact, then you go back to 18 and it might happen that in this time the coating performs all right. Because as a matter of manufacturing, it is possible that only at that location where the first 18 was struck, there was a small problem and therefore, the coating failed. When the, we move the bar to 17 at the next location and go back to 18 at the next location as we keep moving the bar, at that new location where the next 18 was struck, the coating performed all right. And therefore, we are allowed to go to 19 and see how it performs, go to 20 how it performs and so on. Maybe at 21 it fails and if it fails at 21, then we go back to 20 and it passes. We go back to 21 and it fails again. Now, this here is an indication now that the bar is such that it is not able to take a 21 centimeter fall and can take a 20 centimeter fall. And this kind of a process, if we say this happening twice in a row is unacceptable, then we have a situation that we have determined that the impact resistance of that particular bar is 20 centimeters. So, at the end of it the cost is a very important parameter that we must keep in mind when we are using any new material. Coming to other methods, there are tests for flexibility and quality of coating of epoxy coated bars. So, this picture here is that for flexibility of a coating, whereas this picture here is a visual inspection of the coating on the reinforcing bar. So, if we look closely at a coated surface, we might find small droplets, much like the droplets that we see in case of a painted surface. And the presence of these is an unacceptable sign as far as the quality of the epoxy coated bars is concerned. Now, let us come to the durability of the coatings. A coated bar is very good as far as its action in terms of prevention of corrosion is concerned. However, we need to ensure that the coating itself is durable in the specific environment that it is located and the specific environment that we are talking about is that of concrete, which has a high pH and therefore, the coating should be such that it is durable in high pH. Now, these tests when it comes to testing of coated bars or the coatings in concrete is concerned, they can be carried out either by burying these bars in the concrete. So, that we know that they are being buried in an actual environment and there is no simulation involved and we get the performance of the coated bar from this test. If we are using these tests as a quality control measure for the acceptance of epoxy coated bars, then the test method should clearly specify what kind of concrete the bars will be embedded in, how long will the exposure test be carried out and what will be the method adopted to evaluate the bars once they are extracted from the concrete specimen. Another way of doing the test is by simply putting the bars in a simulated environment of concrete and we have often talked about saturated solution of calcium hydroxide being a very good substitute as far as 
concrete is concerned. A saturated solution of calcium hydroxide simulates the high pH. The advantage of carrying out tests like this when we expose the bars or immerse the bars in a saturated solution of calcium hydroxide with whatever other chemicals that we may need to add or we may want to add. The advantage of that is that we can actually see and monitor the deterioration if at all it is occurring in terms of loss of thickness, formation of holidays, crimpling and so on and so forth. The disadvantage of working like this is that at the end of it, it is not the real environment, it is only the simulated environment. Continuing with tests on durability of coatings of epoxy coated bars, an example could be chlorides. We could embed these bars in concrete contaminated with chlorides and see how they perform over a period of time. And these specimens of concrete reinforced with this epoxy coated bars can be exposed to environments such as cyclic wetting and drying with salt water, with plain water, elevated temperature and so on. And the kind of test method that we follow depends on whether we are testing the bars from the point of view of acceptance and quality control or we are testing the performance of bars in an actual environment. In the former case, most of the parameters that we need in terms of the concrete used, the chloride environment, the environment in which the concrete should be exposed, the duration and so on, all those have to be fixed. And we should only try to see that under those fixed conditions of standard testing, what is the performance of the bar. However, in case the target or the objective is to determine the performance of a coated. The objective is to determine the performance or study the performance of a coated bar in a certain environment, then the test conditions have to be suitably modified, so that we are testing the bar in an appropriate environment. And therefore, we need to have another regime by which that evaluation will be carried out. But at the end of it, the evaluation is all in terms of formation of holidays, uh, the, the loss in continuity of the coating, crimpling of the coating, damage to the coating and so on and so forth. We should also remember that compared to a, an epoxy coated bar, which will be extracted out of a concrete specimen, which is shown here or a bar which is going to be extracted out of a solution which has been in which it has been embedded there will be a big difference as far as how it appears as far as the bar which is exposed to a solution is concerned it will be much easier to study that bar in terms of what the coating looks like and so on and so forth whereas a bar which is extracted out of a concrete here would have cement particles, may be sand particles sometimes adhering to the surface of the bar. And th those particles can sometimes not be easily removed, because any attempt to remove those particles could also damage the coating, which is not part of the testing procedure. These things are, these things need to be kept at the back of the mind, when we decide on a testing regime for the epoxy coated bars being used in concrete construction. Now, if we look at the discussion today in the context of what the course or what the other subjects in this, in this module deal with, it could be a situation where we are talking of special concretes, because here we have using a special material as far as reinforcement is concerned. We have addressed reinforcement corrosion. And therefore, the discussion is part of some kind of a deterioration process in reinforced concrete construction. Then we have addressed issues which are related to the maintenance of concrete structures in a slightly convoluted way, but yes, they are relevant from that point of view as well. 
So, the idea is that often times it is not possible to classify a discussion very strictly into one or the other compartment and that is something which you can keep at the back of your mind as we go along in this course. So, the discussion for example, today is relevant from the point of view of reinforcement corrosion in concrete, it is relevant from the point of view of chloride penetration in concrete and also carbonation. I would like to thank the Japan Society for Civil Engineers and their publication recommendations for design and construction of concrete structures using epoxy coated reinforcing bars, which is the basis for most of the material that we discussed today and the photographs, which have been borrowed from Professor Womoto, the chief executive public works research institute Tsukuba in Japan and formerly the professor of the department of civil engineering university of Tokyo and chairman of the concrete committee of JSCE. Now, before we close as usual, let us go through a couple of questions which will help us understand the subject better. We should study a little bit more about the manufacturing process of the epoxy coated reinforcing bars, because once we do that, we will understand what can be the causes for the problems or issues relating to quality as far as epoxy coated bars is concerned. For example, one issue could be the temperature at which the epoxy is deposited on the bars, the duration for which the bar is allowed to stand in that chamber, the rate of cooling of those bars and so on. It will be good if you find out the details respect to bending, impact resistance, holidays and durability. We just discussed the principles of the test, we did not discuss the specific issues as to what kind of concrete, what kind of solution, how long, what temperature and so on for the exposure of these tests. We know it will be good to know a little bit more about the principle and the methods of measurement of thickness in epoxy coated reinforcing bars. That is something which civil engineers often do not encounter, because very few of us actually use epoxy coated bars and unless we use epoxy coated bars, we will not need to measure the thickness of a coating which is very small. That is something which civil engineers often do not do. In case of steel structures, yes of course, when we paint steel structures again from the point of view of corrosion protection, there is a need to determine or measure the thickness of the coating. So, that is something which is slightly different from using epoxy coated bars in RC construction or pre stress concrete construction. Making a list of major projects in India and abroad, where epoxy coated bars have been used would again be a very informative and an instructive exercise. And finally, a better understanding of the cost of epoxy coated bars, so that we have in perspective as to what is the financial implication of using a material, which is more durable yes, but at the end of it what is the kind of cost involved and whether we want to invest that additional amount of cost would depend on what kind of a structure we are building. If we are building a structure, which is very normal or may be temporary, then one may decide that we will not need to use or we need not use epoxy coated bars because of the additional investment involved. Whereas, if we are using or whereas, if we are building a structure like a nuclear plant or a bridge, a critical structure, industrial structure and so on, where we would like the structure to be actually durable or to have no signs of deterioration, the reinforcement not to corrode, there one may say that the investment is justified. And with this, I would like to thank you.